So uh, today, uh, originally I was thinking of uh, start talking about regularity theory, but uh, last night I started thinking, you know, I, I gave definition on the first day, and the sec second and third day I gave you the existence, which was good because, you know, you want to have some existence theory. Uh, but I, have a, I realized I haven't talked anything about the property of <laughs> bracket flow so far. So I think uh, today, what, uh, ch changing my sort of original plan, I'd like to talk about the, uh, uh, some of the basic properties of the bracket flow, which I think, uh, in fact, if I think about it, it's probably not so well known, in fact. So, so today, uh, is number three is uh, some properties of a bracket flow. So, okay, so now I, throughout my talk today, I just uh, suppose that the mu t is the um, is a uh, is a bracket flow is a, just a general dimension k k dimensional uh, bracket flow uh, in R n or some subset of R n doesn't matter very much but uh, maybe it's easier to do R n. Yeah. So the first theorem uh, is the one that you saw actually already is uh, 3.1. That's Huskin's monotonicity formula. And monotonicity formula, Hus Professor Huskin was saying that's only monotonicity formula, but it's usually called mon Huskin's monotonicity formula. Okay, monotonicity formula. The paper is in NIT. Okay, so for bracket flow, this Huskin's monotonicity formula also holds. Okay, so let me show you. Uh, so for y zero fixed and t zero fixed, and let t to be a variable less than strictly less than t zero, and x is in R n. Okay. Now uh, all these uh, variables given are. Uh, let a uh, rho, I, I often write rho, but rho is a f variable of x, t, but uh, to be more precise, uh, you have this reference y0, uh, t0 of x, t, is defined as uh, this uh, backward heat kernel, rho pi, t0 minus t, uh, k over 2, an exponential of uh, minus 4t0 minus t, x minus x0, oh, sorry, y0, I guess, y0. Yep, y0 square. So this is a backward heat kernel at pole a singularity at y0 and t0, and you, uh, yes? Oh, sorry, I. Hmm? Uh, first line? Last line, yes? Row, okay, I, I want to write uh, sometimes as row. Post. This one? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Why is zero T zero? Why why you have this? Oh, sorry, I don't. <laughs> sub indices. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, these are sub indices. Yeah, these are sub indices. Sorry. Yeah. So, is that right? Yeah. Y zero T zero. Yeah. <laughs> is this okay? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, my hearing is not so good, so <laughs> can't hear. Uh, right. 
Any problem? Yeah, that's fine, I guess. Okay, sorry, I, I, I was confused, yeah. Okay, so this is the uh, backward heat kernel. Uh, then the claim is that uh, for any uh, T1 and T2, uh, less than, uh, less than, strictly less than T0. Okay, so for any T1 and T2, uh, the following holds. So Rn, a uh, row of xt. So I'm, I'm skipping this, uh, this uh, sub indices, d mu t of x. Now, uh, if I, if you're looking at the difference at t1 and t2, and this is less than or equal to uh, integration, but here's minus sign t1 to t2 dt and uh, rn, and here's the uh, h of mu t minus uh, Navra rho, perp over rho, square d mu t. Ah, so here's a rho, and the d mu t, here's the integration with respect to x, where um, this perp is the, uh, this is really the projection to the tangent uh, space, okay, so this is a tangent space, but the orthogonal projection, okay? Uh, so, um, of, let's see, if I should have, uh, let's see, u of purpose, meaning uh, projecting this vector to the normal space of the tangent space, okay? And actually, you saw it already in the uh, previous, maybe the second day, was it? Uh, okay, so uh, this, this is, uh, Something you see, uh, and notice that here's the inequality. Uh, well, you, in a smooth case, you should have an equality actually, but uh, that's good. That's good, yeah. Okay. So this I, I want to refer to as uh, so maybe 16 later. Okay. So let's see the proof. Okay. So uh, now, uh, so in this business, basically all you can use this, this uh, brackets uh, inequality, this equa equation number six, or inequality number six. Okay, so, so use this uh, six, which I, uh, is this, uh, you know, the one that you saw, you had in the definition of bracket flow. Uh, use, uh, use six with this row, basically, just, just that's, that's all. So you use row as the test function. Well, this, this function is non-negative. It does have a compact support, but since it's decaying exponentially, it, there's no problem actually just using this function as a test function. And then uh, note that uh, so, so the right-hand side, uh, right-hand side of six, equation six uh, is equal to, uh, what is this? This is, uh, and then uh, of course you're looking at from uh, T1 to T2, T1 to T2 of dt, and uh, remember what this was. This is, um, let's see, so you take a derivative minus rho h ut dot h ut cross d rho dt, okay? That's the right-hand side, okay? I, I, I hope that you can check Equation six, you have a note, okay? Fine, you're just you know, using this. And then, uh, let's see. So all you do is um, just, uh, well, let's see. So this is equal to, um, okay, maybe I, I should uh, look at only this part for the moment, okay? This part. Just uh, time, time integration, let's forget that. And then this is, uh, of course, you have a, h square here minus rho h square is this term, which is a good term. And also, uh, I, I wonder you notice this is done in uh, Ferenc Huskin's talk, but you add and subtract the same thing, okay? The, this ht minus uh, rho h 
T. Okay, you do this. You know, this, this is something, it may look strange, but you just do this addition and subtraction, right? And now, uh, now one thing that, that is somewhat important here is the following. Uh, there's this property that I want to use, uh, is that uh, when mu, okay, so this is a general property about integral, by, uh, integral uh, measure, but uh, so here's a rather important note that when uh, mu is a k integral, so I'm, I'm talking about general k integral, k integral uh, uh, measure, or gen, in, uh, k integral uh, measure that uh, we defined. Uh, something that you know is that this mean curvature vector, mean curvature vector, is in fact uh, perpendicular uh, to the approximate tangent space uh, mu almost everywhere. And this is something called the Bracket's uh, Perpendicularity Theorem. Which you can uh, find in uh, his book in 78. Okay. So, in, uh, well, let me explain this again. So, you see, when, when you say k, k is integral measure, this really means, uh, you see, integral, k integral means, what was that? k integral means that the mu is, uh, is of this form, that, that is, you have theta, which is uh, integer valued, you know, this is integer valued almost everywhere, and times this uh, k dimensional measure restricted to a uh, country and rectifiable set. That was the definition, okay? So if, when I say k integral, that's what the measure is, just integer multiplicity, times, well, the major restricted to this uh, K, K, uh, country K rectifiable set. And so, as I told you in the first day, this guy has a tangent space almost everywhere in the sense of measure, and this uh, perpendicularity theorem tells you that this mean curvature is in fact perpendicular to this tangent space. Of course, if this gamma is smooth, everybody knows that mean curvature is perpendicular, right, to the surface. But for this kind of general setting, this is non-trivial. I mean, you know, this is something you have to prove. But this is true, okay? So I take it as a fact here. So um, the point is, because of that, I can, I can do a projection to the tangent space here. Okay, so that's, that's important that we can, do, we can do this. Otherwise, we would be in trouble, actually. So here is important projection. For smooth case, you do it with no, you know, even without thinking about this, right? Because mean coverage vector is perpendicular, right? But here is something that you use the theorem, all right? So that's fine. Now, uh, okay. So now uh, you do, uh, you continue, okay? So you continue this computation. And um, so here is the, um, let's see. What you have is that, uh, ah, okay, maybe I, I Write a separate uh, things here. Let's let's talk about this one. Okay. So I note that. Um, let's see. Okay. Now by definition, 1.4 on the first day, uh, this Navara row dot mean curvature. Okay. This this one. Uh, this is like a first variation formula. This is equal to minus of. Um, divergence of the uh, tangent space of the, um, basically, the uh, Navra row, right? That's, that's, that's the first variation formula. I hope this is fine. You know, we, we had this notation here as a vector g, g in, the, in this definition. Here's g, okay? So, but we have this gradient now. Okay, so um, now this, this is, you can, Compute this explicitly using the uh, 
pro projection to the tangent space. And uh, so that's uh, Tx mu, which is this approximate tangent space, the ij component, and uh, this is the second derivative of rho xi xj, and d mu t. Okay. Minus, yeah, you got minus. Okay, I hope this is clear. Right, okay, so you have this change here. Okay, so uh, what we have here now is just use that. It's a little bit complicated. Uh, let's see, so maybe continuing, okay, let's, let's use this. Continuing with uh, from there, that's equal to, um, so minus rho, h mu t square plus two number of rho perp h. Uh, now to do a completion of the square, what you do is you subtract, you add and subtract this term. Okay, so you do, you add and subtract the same thing again. And um, the rest, this guy, yeah, plus uh, T X mu uh, I J second derivative of X I X J, okay, and also I guess time derivative. And uh, let's see, I, I think we had the time derivative too, right? Yeah. D T D mu T. Hi. I hope this is just simple computation. Yeah. Now note that this part comes out to be the square that we want there. Yeah? That's, that's the right hand side you see. This is equal to minus of rho h uh, minus number of rho perp over rho of square rho. So that's, that's this time, right? Now uh, we are left with these things here. Right. Now, uh, so here is the uh, something that uh, is very, very special about this um, uh, heat, backward heat kernel, is that uh, that term just vanish. So, just to remind you that uh, property about this backward heat kernel is that um, uh, for any or any, um, here's an orthogonal projection, orthogonal projection ma matrix, S, say, uh, uh, we have this S is matrix, S, I, J, but this is the orthogonal projection map to the k-dimensional subspace. Yeah, that's, this is a matrix, uh, k, uh, N by N matrix representing the uh, projection the, to the k-dimensional k, k subspace. Uh, we have this property uh, that, that um, uh, if you do a projection of Sij, Ij from 1 to n, and uh, 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 second derivative rho, Xi, Xj, and plus uh, this pup, pup, uh, projection to the pup, uh, pup, pup square divided by rho, plus d rho dt is identical equal to zero. Okay, so that's, that's very, very special, and that's the reason it works. Okay, so this is number 17. Yeah, fine. This is something you can explicitly compute and check. Okay, so I, for your, if you have never seen this, please check this. It's very, um, you, you can, you know, you can assume that s is, you can just check this by assuming that s is equal to r k cross zero and minus k if you like. Okay, so you can just check this is going to be true, right? This is, um, yeah, you just, uh, you compute the first RK variable, you just compute the, the rest, and then uh, take a square and then divide by rho, this comes out to be zero, okay? So uh, using that, you see this term just goes away. This goes away, okay? So that's it. That's a proof. 
of this monotonicity formula. Okay, so that's it. Okay, now uh, there are a lot of corollaries that comes up from this uh, theorem. So that, let me state a few things. Corollary 3.2. On the, it's, we have 3.1. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 3.2. Now, um, okay, so this is very uh, important um, uh, formula. Now, let me first give you the, this one. X delta is positive. And then uh, the conclusion is that then there exists some C which depend on only on the dimension and delta such that. Um, uh, the following is true. So the supremum of um, R moving freely, positive, T is bigger than or equal to delta square, and X is any point in Rn, and of uh, mu T of Br, this is a ball, ball radius R, divided by uh, R to the K, this is bounded by constant times the initial measure. Okay, this is true. So what is the meaning? I hope that this is clear. That is, uh, the amount of measure you in the ball radius R divided by you know, R to the K, which should be the right kind of scaling, because this is the area, k dimension area after all. Uh, this is uniformly bounded, basically, by initial mass. So uh, you know, this really means that uh, whenever you zoom in, uh, what you see is somehow a uh, you know, nice k-dimensional measure. You know, it, it, it's, like, it's not like measure is uh, get concentrated. Okay? So it's sort of upper bound. Uh, density ratio, so-called density ratio, upper bound. OK, so this proof. So the proof is uh, using a monotonicity formula. Uh, just a fixed t uh, bigger than delta, or delta square maybe, delta square, and uh, let's see, I think, did I have a statement? So, yeah, okay, delta square, and uh, let uh, x be uh, any point in Rn. And then, uh, well, we may as well assume that uh, x is equal to zero, okay, just uh, by translation. Okay, uh, may assume x equal to 0. And now uh, we consider just simply the following. Uh, consider the uh, backward heat kernel, but uh, let's see, at, 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 where at 0, it, uh, the, at the uh, center at this t plus uh, r square okay, um, of x s, say. So you want to um, look at the place a, x equal to 0 and time t. But you, so, so you want to look at this point, but your, your pole, the, the, this backward heat kernel has a pole a little bit later, t plus r square. Okay? So you have this, this, this guy has a pole here, but you want to know about this, this point. Now, uh, so this monotonicity formula, uh, this monotonicity formula number 16, uh, with uh, uh, where this T1 uh, is equal to 0 and the T2 to be T, okay? We have the following. By the monotonicity formula, uh, this monotonicity formula tells you that rho of this 0 T plus R square 
of x, x, uh, let's see, t of d mu t, uh, well, t, yeah, t, by monotheism is less than or equal to rho of 0 t plus r squared doesn't change, but x 0. Okay, here's integration with respect to x, d mu 0 of x. Okay, so that's, you know, this is the at t equal to, uh, sorry, the time equal to t, and this is time equal to 0. Right? This is supposed to be decreasing in time, right? So this is true. Now, uh, okay, so this one, you can bound this from below, this one. Uh, let's see, uh, this one, note that this is equal to, if you write out again the, uh, what, what this was, this is 4 pi. Now, uh, here's, what is the, um, so the time difference is this minus this. So this, here you have r square. an exponential of um, minus of, uh, let's see, here's x square over 4, now here's r square of d mu t of x, okay? You see this t plus r square minus t, it comes out to be r square, so you have the r square there. And uh, note that this, this, this quantity, let's see, this quantity here is, uh, is well, note that here is x square, r square. So when x, the norm of x is not too big, this, this guy is not so small, okay? So my point is, this is actually bigger, okay? So this is bigger than equal to on the ball radius r, now on the ball radius r, that means this is less than r, this stays at, at worst. Um, exponential function of minus four. Mm, is that right? Now let's see. That's, I had four pi, but four. Should be four, yeah. Four. Uh, yes. D mu t. Okay. Note that I'm restricting my integration at ball radius r. I'm just throwing away the rest. Okay. So of course this is non-negative function, so it's going to be less. Now note that here is a square and then two over k. So this r to the k comes out, right? So this is, from below, you can bound this by uh, 1 over r to the k, and uh, let's say 4 by, this number doesn't matter very much, but uh, k over 2, uh, e to the minus 1, 4, and mu of um, b r, okay? Okay, the point is, you know, we are restricting a ball to the radius r, okay? So that exponential function does not become very small. Okay, so I hope this is fine. Now, uh, on the other hand, okay, so this is there's a chain of this uh, inequality. Now, let's look at this one. This one is, um, uh, now, if I write out again, this is 4 pi, uh, here is uh, now uh, t, plus r square of uh, k over 2 exponential of now minus uh, 4 t plus r square over x square of uh, d mu 0 of x. Now I'm just uh, throwing, so I'm going to bound this from above. So I just throw away this exponential function. This exponential function is after all less than or equal to one. This is at most one. And here, note that the t has a lower bound. I want, you see, I had a t bigger than delta square. So you see t has a lower bound from delta square. 
So at last, this guy from above is 4 pi delta square at worst, k over 2, and um, mu 0 of the total space. Okay. I hope this is clear. I'm just bounding this quantity. You see, the, when t gets small, this guy is big, but I'm saying that t doesn't get so small, like less than and at least delta square. Okay, so you get this. Now, putting them together, you see you bounded this divided by r to the k is bigger than this. Okay? And that's um, precisely, presumably, what I wanted to get. Okay? I hope that's right. Yeah. So I, 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 you see this, right? This, this, well, this is, uh, I shifted x to the origin. But this divided by r to the k is bounded by this constant. These are these are constant I, I say C. Okay, C is this constant times the measure. Okay, so that's the end. Okay, so that's good. So we have this upper bound of the measure. Um, now, how about the lower bound of the measure? The lower bound uh, actually is not expected in a usual sense. Right? Because you see, you have this kind of shrinking sphere, for example, where you know shrinking sphere, you cannot things are getting smaller and smaller. So at some instance, you can't have the lower side of that inequality, right? I mean, because these things are getting smaller. But uh, there's some time derived uh, lower bound that you can get. So uh, here's the. the uh, this is also uh, very important estimate, then we have uh, some L which depend on uh, delta k and uh, let's just say initial measure, which is not so sharp but just enough, and there exists some C depending only on dimension, uh, such that uh, with the following, okay, with the following. So uh, now, if t is bigger than delta square, so I, I, I'm still uh, looking at uh, away from t equals zero, uh, and also uh, if uh, x is in the support of mu t, okay, so that means it's you are in sort of in the surface, okay, support is uh, like a surface. So then um, conclusion is that uh, for R with um, uh, t minus r square is bigger than equal to delta square. We have the following lower bound. We have um, mu at t minus r square. So I'll explain what this means. L r r uh, sorry r of x divided by r to the k, this is bounded from below by the ck. Okay. So let me see what this means. So this means uh, in terms of picture, uh, so let, let this is x and let this be time. Uh, so we are looking at the uh, area where this, this is delta square. Okay, so you don't want this to be too close to zero, time zero. Uh, so suppose you have some point x which in the, in the support, so that you are in the, in the, you know, you are, you are in the piece of the surface is here. Then uh, this is claiming is that, well, uh, if you go back in time by r square, you know, so this, you, you are here, here you are t, uh, here, yeah, your support, this is time t, you are in, you know, in the support. So at time t, at, at time t, x is in the surface, 
then uh, what is claimed is if you go back minus, if you go back by r square and look at the ball radius, uh, radius uh, r, lr, so it's slightly hard to describe. This, this is supposed to be a ball of radius uh, uh, lr, okay? Then uh, there must be uh, some definite amount of measure, okay? Comparable to the size of this ball, right? So even though it's not the same time, you have to go back in time, you know, then you have some lower bound. Okay, um, okay so this also follows um, relatively easily from the monotonicity formula. It's also a very important consequence. So uh, let's see. So I might say this is, uh, you know, the uh, density ratio lower bound, but with the time delay, uh, you have to go time in forward, density ratio lower bound. Yeah, this uh, density ratio lower bound is very important in many of the calculus of variation problem. So you, you want this very much, usually. Okay, uh, yeah. All right, let's see. So let's uh, also follow. This is slightly more computational than before, but um, idea is the same. And proof. Uh, let's see. So, okay, so now assume that uh, x0 is, just, is in the support. Okay, so instead of x, I, I, just to be specific, I, I choose x0. Okay. Uh, so x0 is in the support. Support at time t, maybe I should say um, t0, just to be specific in time, okay. Uh, now, what does this mean? Uh, if a point is in the support, that means uh, if you take arbitrary small ball centered at this point, and if you measure, you know, your measure is not zero. That, that, that is what support means, right? I mean, take any ball as small as you want, right? that the measure is not zero, okay? So, uh, so uh, that means for any epsilon, take any epsilon, uh, mu t zero of b uh, epsilon of x zero is not zero, okay? So that's because of the support. I mean, this number could be very small, but it doesn't matter, it's non-zero, okay? That's, that's important. Now, there are actually two cases that, that is a bit technical, but uh, le let me go through this. This is somewhat, uh, this is the kind of things you have to deal with uh, when you're dealing with bracket flow somehow. It's, it thinks it's kind of a bit, bit messy, you know, not, not as nice as smooth case. Yeah, so, um, you know, for example, you can, of course, like, uh, yeah, I was just listening to first he was in talk and he would say something like, you know, just do take, uh, what was he saying? Uh, DDT minus Laplacian, you know, you just, whatever, <laughs> given you, you compute DDT minus the pressure. But here, you know, you can't do that, of course. <laughs> it's, it's not smooth at all, so <laughs> you have to uh, do these type of things. Okay, so um, now there are two cases. If um, mu T0 is uh, K integral, you see, no, remember that this mu, this random measure, uh, this bracket flow is almost everywhere uh, in time uh, integral, but not every time. So you have to differentiate two cases, right? Like maybe it's integral, almost all time integral, but not, not all. So uh, if it's k integral, uh, that means, uh, that means uh, just to remind you that this, that means mu t0 is of this form, say that t0 of h k mu t0. If, if it's a uh, uh, k integral of this form. Now, uh, this, this gamma t zero is rectifiable. Gamma t zero is uh, rectifiable. So uh, since it's rectifiable, uh, and x, x is uh, in this set, actually it's not so clear, it's, in, it's not even in this set, but 
Uh, anyway, so um, this means, uh, okay, so this means uh, that, uh, let's see, um, meaning uh, mu of t0 of b epsilon x0 is uh, nothing but uh, integration of t0. Okay, just a bit technical, but let me just go through this. Uh, uh, intersected with gamma t0 d mu. Okay, so that's what it is. Okay, and uh, since this is integer valued, it's it's at at least one. Okay, so that's always bigger than or equal to one. So we know h k of b epsilon x0 of gamma t0 is uh, like that. Oh wait, wait. So let's see. Is that right? Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, let's see, so maybe, do, do I need to do this? Um, let's see. My, yeah. Just a moment, maybe the low bound is not good because I want to bound this from below. So, um, um, okay, let's see. Um, yeah, I guess I have to be a bit careful. Um, right, well, Let's see, a bit technical here, so let, let me actually uh, just only say that, uh, uh, let's see, so my point is the um, HK of B epsilon X0 intersected with gamma K uh, T0, this cannot be zero, okay? So this has to be positive, okay? So, uh, yeah, I guess that's clear, because if it's zero, then of course this has to be zero, right? Okay, so that's fine, yeah. So I hope this is fine, yeah. This, this is being positive means that this is, has to be big positive, yeah? If it's zero, it's measure zero. I mean, this, this guy is gonna be zero. Okay, so that means uh, there is some piece of uh, surface arbitrary nearby, right? The epsilon was arbitrary, okay? And so that means, uh, Arbitrary close by points of x0, there is some piece of this guy, and this one has approximate tangent space almost everywhere. So, arbitrary close point of x0, there must be some point or point where this guy has approximate tangent space. Okay, so, yeah, these kind of things I, I think. Uh, uh, it's a bit technical, but once you know, see it, I, I think it was, you, you know. So um, this means that um, we can find, uh, let's see, we can find x tilde and also uh, r tilde uh, such that, let's see, uh, this hk of gamma t0 of br tilde, x tilde. Um, uh, yeah, maybe uh, what I wanted to say is in arbitrary uh, close by of uh, x naught, okay, so a very arbitrary close, close by point of x zero, we can find x tilde and r tilde such that this is uh, bigger than or equal to one half of r tilde k, omega k. Okay, so the idea is, okay, so here's x zero. Okay, so this point may be, uh, actually may be like a cusp like this. Okay, where maybe you don't have so much me measure, but at least nearby point, there's a place where there's a tangent space. Okay, so there is always some nearby point where you have a tangent space like this, okay? So if you zoom in enough here, if you zoom in enough here, you can have this kind of property because you see, the, having tangent plane means if you zoom in, things look flat, right? So uh, you can have some, this R tilde may be very small, but it doesn't matter, okay? You can have such things. I, I hope this makes sense, yeah? Here's X zero. And then nearby point, there's a place where there's a tangent space. So if you zoom, if you zoom in, picture looks picture should look something like this. So you just take this point to be 
x tilde, okay? And then just choose some appropriate um, r tilde, okay? So that you have this kind of lower bound. Right, okay, I hope this <laughs> makes sense. It's a bit, I, I'm doing this very carefully today, just to uh, be clear, okay, to make things work. Yeah, I think this th type of detail is a bit uh, something that one has to deal with uh, in geometric meta theory. So, okay, so now the point is, okay, now we have a point where we have this kind of lower density bound. Very good law of density bind. So you can use this point to go back in time to, and use monotensity formula, okay? So uh, something you can do is now, um, now I just do this, consider the uh, row. Now is the row centered at this point, x tilde, and the t0 plus r tilde square of x, okay? You see, this is a good point with good density property from below, okay? So I can use this to go back in time to do monotensity formula, okay? So now consider this point. Now, again, use the uh, formula 16 uh, for uh, t1 equal to um, t0 minus r square and T2 is this time T0. Now we have, what, uh, we have this monotensity formula again, uh, rho of x tilde T0 plus r tilde square of x and T0, d mu T0, is less than equal to, again, by monotensity formula, uh, rho of x tilde, that this is the same, t plus, t0 plus r tilde square of x and, uh, let's see, t0 minus r square, t0 minus r square. Okay, that's just, uh, you know, a t, t2 is uh, t0, is that right, t2, yeah, okay, t1 is this one, uh, t2 is this one, yeah, okay. That's multi formula. Now you just uh, do the same kind of things that we did before. Um, this, uh, uh, this one, the uh, left-hand side, you can, you can bound this from below. Okay, so exactly the same way as before. You note that this difference is r to the square, so that's by exactly the same kind of argument that we saw before, here is a b r tilde x zero. I, I don't repeat the same thing, but I, I think you, you saw this one, so r tilde square k over two and the exponential of minus four for one. We had these things before, u t zero. That's, that's a lower bound you know, as, as, as just as before, you know, the, the way we did before. And this we know is less than equal to four pi k over two e to the minus one fourth and mu t zero of Bohr of radius uh, tilde x zero, uh, x, x, is that x zero? Uh, sorry, x tilde, I guess, yeah, sorry, x tilde. is x tilde. Eh? So, uh, and now we have this, this guy using this good lower bound here is bigger than equal to uh, this four pi k over two e to the minus one fourth. And here's a two. Uh, now, uh, let's see, uh, I hope that's correct. Oh, I lost this guy, yeah? Here's, I, I had this r to the k, r to the k, yeah, sorry. So um, we have, uh, note, note that this is um, 
this bound from below the mu of br tilde x tilde. Okay. So uh, you see, this this is less than this. Yeah. So um, t zero like this. Um, yep. So that that shows you that this is uh, is yeah bigger than this times omega k. I guess. Yeah. So here is the constant c k. Okay. Or maybe not. Uh, maybe not. It's not yet c k. But anyway, this is some definite constant depending on, only on the dimension. Okay. 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 So that's from below and from above. So right hand side from above. Uh, let's see what that happens here is the, ah, yeah, this one's um, a little bit more trickier than before, uh, but let's, let's write this, uh, let's write this for by this difference. Uh, let's see, okay, let's see what you have here. I hope this is correct. Yeah, uh, let's see, so that's the difference would be, um, let's see, um, R tilde square plus R square, or K over two. It's a bit technical, sorry, but I, I think I have to do this. Um, exponential of minus X minus X tilde square over four pi R tilde square plus R square. New T zero minus R square. Okay, I, I guess that's equal, in fact. Okay, so that's equal. Fine. And uh, let's see. So, now what we have. Now, this right, left hand side is bounded from below by this definite constant. And this side, note that this, this um, R tilde, You see, this R tilde is, um, yeah, this R tilde and X tilde was uh, sort of arbitrary, right? X tilde is arbitrary close point to X zero, and R tilde is arbitrary small, basically. So you can take it to be the limit. You know, this, this is independent of that choice, right? So we can actually take this to be um, basically um, x0, yeah? So I can just let this x to that to go to x0, and I can take this to be 0. Okay, just. So in the end, uh, we end up having uh, almost what we want, but <laughs> it's a little bit more tricky now. I have to take care of the sort of exponentially small tail here, uh, you'll see. But that can be done. All right, so that's slightly more technical. Okay. Okay, so th just uh, summarizing what we had now, uh, let's call this as uh, just some, some constant, All right? So CK is less than equal to, uh, now here's a four pi, as I said, this is I can just take this k okay, over two exponential function of minus of uh, x square, uh, x minus x tilde, uh, x zero square, and uh, four. Ah, there's no pi here. Sorry, soon before. Uh, I don't know. I, I had four pi, but r. There's so many uh, hints, things here. So, okay. Let's see. This is that's it. Yeah, mu t0 minus r square, okay? So we got almost there, but <laughs> not yet, uh, over. Now, um, I want to change it to ball, okay? <laughs> this, is, this is not the end of, you know, what we, uh, I erase it perhaps, but uh, it's, now, I, I want it to be, um, so, so the, the point is, this guy is exponentially small away from the, you know, x, Zero, so that you can make it to be small. So I just change it to uh, the f I separate this into two 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 uh, integration. So one is one is um, 
uh, Rk, I just bound this by one, okay? So B mu T0 minus R square. And the other one is the, uh, the complement, okay? Uh, let's see, this one I keep, four pi uh, square, okay, over two. Exponential, here's my, still I keep it. Okay, so I just separated it into the case of ball where this capital L is going to be chosen to be big actually later now, and the complement, okay? You know, this is what we wanted to get actually. This, this one is precisely, this one is precisely equal to four pi r to the k mu of t zero minus r square of b r l, okay? So this is the one that we wanted to get a lower bound, okay? This is exactly the one that we wanted to have a lower bound. Uh, you know, we are in good shape almost. Here is a constant, positive constant. You know, we have this from above. I just want to make sure this guy is small, okay? Then we'll be happy. Now, estimating this, you can kind of guess that this guy, you know, this, this is exponential function, you know, going very fast, zero away from the x zero. So uh, you can actually do estimate, uh, but it's not actually so totally trivial, but you can actually estimate using this uh, uh, well-known formula that the integral of this is equal to um, uh, zero to infinity of the measure of uh, f is bigger than equal to s of ds. Okay, so this is something I, I think it's like, you can think it's Fubini theorem, I guess. But you can use this formula to, um, you know, you do this, uh, you see, th this is a radially dependent, de radial depending function, so you can use radius uh, here as s. And then you can estimate this guy to be uh, less than equal to, I, I don't do this computation, but you can check this uh, yourself that you can actually uh, also using the fact, uh, here is a, using also corollary 3.2, this is upper bound estimate. Okay, this is upper bound estimate of the ratio. You can actually bound this by mu zero of Rn times some function, which is like some constant of K. And if you write out, um, you will come up to this, um, that's, that's really, uh, I think it, uh, you can do this, so I don't do this, but you can, uh, you end up having some kind of quantity like this, comes out to be, after um, change of variable. You know, use this kind of things, where S is radius, you know, you, you move around with radius, it comes out to be this, and so if, you, if L is chosen uh, sufficiently large, this can be made as small as you want. Actually, this is exponentially small, right, with respect to L. So you can make this small, small by uh, taking L large, so small that it will be smaller than half of this, for example, okay? Then you get a low bound for this, right? Okay, so that's the end of the proof. That's, that's a really complete proof. Oh, but, oh, sorry, no, not yet, <laughs> not yet. So there's a, okay, so that's a case where this time is integral. There's a time, <laughs> there's a case that this is not integral. But, okay, so I, I skipped this part, but since almost all time is integral, you can always uh, uh, somehow approximate from nearby time, and you can, you can make this work, okay? So uh, I, I just point out that if it's not, then yeah, this is a bit more technical aspect, but uh, just I, I say one word. If it's not integral, then uh, here's something that you can use. If not, not uh, k integral, uh, the uh, Blanket's inequality, this uh, inequality tells you the following, which you can use. Um, it, it's, it's also an exercise sort of things that dim uh, let's see, uh, as an exercise, I forgot what it was. Uh, yeah, if it's, it's not integral, um, right, right, lim inf of uh, t approaching to t0 of uh, mu t of b epsilon x0, this is actually 
always uh, at least above of t0, there's this low semi-continuity. Um, oh, no, no, I guess it's called low semi-continuity. No, no, it's not bad. Anyway, so you have this, this uh, property. So, um, so that is, if you approach from you know, below, it cannot drop in so much. Because you see, this brackets inequality is you know, it's like from below, so you cannot drop too much, right? So this is always true. So if this is positive, then there's some, you know, arbitrary close time that this is going to be positive. So then, then you can always choose some appropriate time where it's integral. You just do the same argument, and you know, you get the same type of estimate, right? So that, that's a uh, precise uh, proof, okay? So that's the end. Okay, that was a bit, uh, Long, but um, did I end? Oh, 15 minutes. Oh, that's pretty fast. All right. Um, now, let's see. So, what did I want to do? Ah, yes. So, this estimate tells you something actually rather interesting. Um, so, uh, picture wise, so suppose you had the support, a, a point of support uh, at t, at time t. Then uh, this says that um, going back in time, you, you know, there has to be some amount of measure going back in time, t minus r square, where here's t. But so the, if you, go, if you uh, look at the um, other way, note that if you don't have too much mass here, that means this part is not going to be in the support, right? So the picture wise, uh, assume that you had a ball of radius, say, 2 uh, LR, okay, ball of radius, ball of 2 uh, LR, and assume that the measure inside here is measure inside uh, is less than equal to, say, this number CK divided by 2 to the R to the K, okay? Measure inside of this ball at some time T minus R square was small. Well, small means there might be a lot of things here, which is very small piece of surfaces inside. But after some time, if you look at the ball radius um, half, that is BLR, uh, you know, there's nothing in, inside, basically, at time t. Because if there is something that means there must be something before, right? But I'm assuming that there wasn't enough measure. Okay? So that means if you have some area where there isn't much measure, after some short time, you will see empty spot. Okay? That, that's the idea. Right? So um, this is something I think you don't think too much when you're dealing with smooth case. But you see, this is telling you, you know, whatever you know, surface you have, Whenever you have small measure, after some short time, you see empty space, nothing, no, no surface. Okay. So that's actually something that um, rather interesting about this uh, mean curvature flow uh, in this setting of bracket. OK, so the next things I'd like to explain is uh, some, uh, something that's quite useful uh, for regularity theory. and. Uh, Maybe I just don't have time to um, compute this, so I'll just uh, tell you the result and tell you what to do. Um, that's um, right. OK, so this is proposition uh, 3.1. Now, uh, let, uh, t is, let t be the uh, projection map uh, to the k-dimensional. Uh, also, orthogonal projection map matrix, okay, orthogonal projection matrix. And um, then T perp is the uh, orthogonal complement, okay, so T perp is really uh, orthogonal complement. Okay, and then uh, let uh, T perp of, T perp is the projection from Rn to T part, okay. So when I write T part, I it's a bit confusing perhaps, but this means two things. This means sometimes it's just a subspace, 
in this case, n minus k dimensional subspace, but also may mean the, uh, the matrix representing that orthogonal projection to it, okay? Now, the proposition 3.1 says that for x in the support of mu t, and uh, with, uh, again, the same condition that t is less, uh, bigger than equal to delta square, I don't want this to be too close to the origin, then we have the following. Uh, we have this following estimate that this, as if you are in support, t part of x is, well, take a square, is less than equal to the um, 1 over 4 pi delta square, I guess, I don't know, delta, it should be square here, um, k over 2, and rn, t perp of x, square d mu 0, okay? This holds. Okay, so that's um, uh, interesting. Uh, estimate. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, yeah, this means uh, this is, uh, this is really is the uh, x projected to the orthogonal space to the tangent. So this really is actually, if you think about it, this is really a distance function to the, uh, to the t. Okay, because you see, uh, you have, here's a t, here's a t part, and then x to, uh, projected to this, and then you know, this is the t part of x. So, uh, yeah, that's, you can think this more like a fancy way of writing distance function to, distance to the. Ah, yeah, yeah, sorry, this is x. Yeah. So this means that, uh, you see, this is, you, uh, w when you're in a support, you see, uh, this distance from t is bounded by Basically, this is more like a L2 function, okay? Uh, in the sense that, uh, not, not that this is really uh, soup bound in terms of L2 bound of the height. Okay, so this is very really, um, saying that this is L infinity bound of the height of a, a surface in some sense. Okay, so that's how surface is, of course, generally says, in terms of, of L2 height. You see, this is like distance function from T, you know, taking square and then integrating, so this is really, well, not exactly, but almost like height L2 function. Okay? And bounding, uh, you know, how much you can be away from T. Now, here's a time T equal to zero, and here is time is slightly later, okay, not near the, so, you know, you have this division, so as delta gets small, this deteriorates, but as long as you're away, you have this bound. Okay, so uh, how can you prove this? I, I wish that I had time to do this, but um, I didn't have time, so let, let's just give you the idea of the proof. So, um, well, we look at the point where this is the um, support, of mu t zero, I mean that's a good, not a good way to write. Um, okay, x zero is the support of mu t zero. Um, now, what you do is you consider the uh, heat kernel, backward heat kernel, centered at this point, but slightly later t zero plus epsilon square. Okay, you consider this backward heat kernel, okay? Now, you, what you do is the following. So, um, you use, again, monotonicity formula, but with di slightly different things. So, in fact, you use a monotonicity formula uh, like con uh, computation with, uh, use the, uh, maybe do the computation similar computation uh, with, well, actually, let, let me write eta of x and rho, uh, where eta is any positive function, 
Okay, so it doesn't have to be uh, anything, but with this row, okay. Well, you had before you had only row, but now I I I, I multiply this eta. Yes, you just do the same computation, exactly the same, and it comes out to be the following. So, with this, um, let's see uh, the the. Uh, right hand side of this uh, brackets inequality, okay, so maybe I should, right, the left hand side is, left hand side is, um, is precisely, uh, you know, this uh, eta rho evaluated at t equal to zero and uh, t zero, okay. Now the right hand side, if you just do the same kind of computation, you know, you know, subtract and then t taking a square, uh, you completing the square, you know, exactly the same kind of computation, comes out to be the following. So this, um, you can check that this is going to be minus of um, T x mu i j, so this is over summation i j, and rho times eta uh, x i x j. So this is, I guess, you have integration from t0 to t0. You, you end up having this um, computation. Okay? I, I don't have time to do this, but exactly the same computation, you, I, I don't think you can do it okay, if you want to. Now, note that the, here is the, is, you know, this Hessian and this one is a projection map. And now, I, you, if I choose eta to be this t power of x squared, this is really a quadratic function of x. So this is non-negative matrix. And this is projection, you know, so that's non-negative. So this comes out to be non-negative again, okay? So that's uh, one, one thing, okay? So I choose, this is true for any eta, but if I choose this guy in particular, this is convex function. So this is going to be less than or equal to zero. Now, so you have this, now you have this t of x squared here, right? Now, when t equal to zero, when t equal to zero, this guy, now rho is a bounded function, basically, away from, you know, pole. So you can bound this by this kind of right-hand side quantity, okay? Because rho, you know, is bounded function by this kind of factor. Now, left-hand side, uh, sorry, when t equal to t0, this guy, you know, when t equal to t0, what happens is that it's, it's, it's going to be very close to the pole of this backward heat kernel, right, when t, equal, t is equal to t0, because you, you are just with, you know, epsilon square, yeah. So it's really like a delta function, and uh, in fact, if you let epsilon go to zero, it's going to be a really a delta function, okay? So in the end, actually, because it's delta function, you end up having this guy, this this as as a delta function, you know, uh, value. And you see, uh, when epsilon epsilon goes zero, it's really delta function evaluated, and um, and uh, yeah, I, there's also a point that uh, at this point you have to choose this point to be a point where you have a, a tangent space. Then. Tangent space means if you, you know, expand, it looks flat. You can choose generic nearby point where this, this guy is, has a tangent space. And then uh, now if you do this kind of, uh, if, if you, this guy behaves like a Gaussian uh, delta function, you can actually show that this integration, okay, this integration as epsilon goes to zero, converts to just a value of this function. Okay? I, I hope you can kind of get, uh, buy this one. So as a result, you, 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 have, this, uh, you have this estimate, okay? So that, that's the idea. If I try to do this very carefully, I, I think it takes a really long time. So uh, now you can actually localize this, in fact. So let me write this and finish. Um, so the local version of this can be also derived. So this is by localizing. 
Uh, let's see. Here's a proposition 3.2. You can find this statement in my paper if you are interested. Prop 6.4, Kasai and myself. Uh, just uh, as a reference, not so much as you. Now, if it is a bracket flow, then you have the following. So, uh, yeah, in uh, this, uh, well, I'm, I'm giving a scaled version of this to R cross, let's see, to, to R square. Okay, in this ball, uh, or in this cylinder, then we have the following, that the one over R square, supremum of T perp of X square, where the soup is uh, X in the support of mu T, T is um, R square, two R square, is less than equal to, um, oh, it's kind of run out of space, but C and K divided by R to the K plus four, that's the right scaling, zero to two R square dt and b to R perp of x square d mu t. Okay, so um, you get this one. I'm going to use this tomorrow. So note that, well, I, I just put this R so that it's going to be scale invariant. That's, there's nothing fancy about this. It, this comes out to be the right because t has r a square, you know, and the, this guy is k dimensional, so it's the right. Uh, uh, and also, yeah, this here's a length scale. This is like length, so this has, comes out to be k plus four. This is length, so it should be divided by r square. So uh, note that this is uh, really um, the sub norm bound uh, in a sort of a smaller ball. Here's t is uh, off the zero. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, you, have, you should have this one. Yeah. Uh, inside, then it's bounded by, basically, uh, not like that one, but you have to integrate in space, but basically this is like L2 norm in space time, okay? So um, you get this one up from this uh, multiplicity formula with certain cutoff function, okay? Just you do a cutoff in space and cutoff in time. And then you just do uh, some little argument and you get this. And actually, I think even for minimal surface, I, I'm not so sure it's so, I'm not so sure that for minimal surface, you know, this is so easy to get. Maybe it is, but th th using this multiplicity formula, actually, it's, it's kind of straightforward to get this, but yeah. And you actually, it's very interesting about this is that when I try to do uh, regularity theory, you do need this kind of linear dependence somehow of the uh, height being bounded by L2. If you look up the uh, original paper of Alan, for example, this kind of estimate is available, but the way he does is, uh, you know, you lose this linear dependence somehow. It, this guy get, has to be raised by some power, for example, in a somewhat uh, clumsy way. And uh, so, uh, and this, somehow the height being sharply bounded by L2 is rather essential in uh, carrying out the regularity theory in the case of bracket somehow, uh, which you don't have to have for, for the case of minimal surface, in fact. And uh, so I, I hope that I, I can explain this aspect tomorrow. Okay, sorry, I went over time, I guess.